Hi, this is Quinn, and welcome to Quinn Tech. Well, thank you for coming along on my latest episode. Um, in this one, I'll be showing off another system that's near and dear to my heart that I actually own. I may in the future just do emulation stuff, because I don't own every system in the world, but I do own a lot of systems, and this one was a handheld system that came out in the late 90s uh, called the Neo Geo Pocket. So, Neo Geo was a company that had been around for a long time, and they came out with my the first fighting game that I ever discovered, which was called Samurai Showdown. There were other fighting games before that, but that was the first one that I was introduced to. And I think it was at a Finnegan's or one of those chain restaurants that used to be in the South Park area, diagonally across from South Park Mall here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And they had, you know, the, the, the stand-up case of that um, arcade game and the Neo Geo which actually was kind of a cool system uh, you could put up to four games in it and if you went up to it you could select which of the four games you wanted to play put your quarter in select the game or I think you even select it before you put your quarter in and then another feature they had if you had the home version of the game system you could take your uh, save game card cartridge or however that worked I never owned one but I I did have a friend who actually had one of those back in the 90s but if you had that device you could actually go to the arcade and plug your memory stick or memory card or memory cartridge or whatever it was you could plug it into the arcade machine and start off from where you left off on your home system or you could save your high scores or whatever so it was an interesting system it was like uh, tried to bridge the arcade experience into your home and they did a lot of that stuff in the 80s where they had home ports of arcade games but this one you brought the arcade home you actually were playing the actual game that you could have at the, that you could play at the arcade with quarters you could take this system home if you had a Neo Geo um, system, you could bring the game home with you and play the actual game. It wasn't a port. It was the actual game. It played exactly like it would at the arcade. So that was a really neat thing. But that's a whole other system. What I'm talking about in this video is the Neo Geo Pocket. So it was a handheld little device that... Um, kind of came out to rival the Game Boy Color because this was the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And again, they came out with the Neo Geo Pocket in 98, which was in black and white, which rivaled the Game Boy. And then they came out with the Neo Geo Pocket Color in 99, which rivaled the Game Boy Color. So, it was a neat system, and I have a few games. I have eight games for it. A lot of them are fighting games. I love fighting games. But in this video, I decided to take a different route, and I didn't play any fighting games. I played a couple of my other... I have three games that are not fighting games, and I have five games that are fighting games for the system. So I played two of the three non-fighting game 
titles that I own. And because it's a handheld, it's a little bit hard to show physically on a video. And this wasn't even backlit. You would have to have an external light to like shine on it to give it enough light to see it. And it, it was just technically too difficult to to show me playing on the handheld. So I'm using an emulator called Neopop. It's a really cool emulator. It came out in the early 2000s. It's been around for a long time. But it emulates this game system really well. This handheld. And uh, I do want to tell you this one part of the video. I say... He said, he said he didn't really like the controller. So, I would typically put a little tech, some text up on the screen and explain what I meant by that. But for some reason, on this video, I can't put the text up on the screen. So, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, when I said he didn't, I mean my friend Adam, um, he... I met him in New York City in in the year 2000 and we hung out and I brought this system with me and he played around with it and he gave me a comment on one of my videos I believe a few weeks ago and said uh, I, I didn't really like the control how that how the controller was on that handheld. So when I say he said he didn't like the controller, I'm talking about my friend Adam. I just wanted to say that now because when I play the video, you might be you might be wondering, well, who is he and what is he talking about? So that is the he and the what. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you again for coming along on my journey. Again, like I usually say, this is a journey. I've had to learn a few new things for this video. I had to figure out because the audio, the volume from the emulator was way too loud compared to my voice coming through my uh, cell phone. Not this cell phone, but I'm using my old cell phone uh, to become a webcam. And another thing that Adam, speaking of Adam, he made a comment in my last video saying, oh, well, why are you using a cell phone to be a webcam? Because don't you already have a webcam? Well, yes, on my laptop I do, but I'm using my desktop to do this. I don't have a webcam for my desktop. So, I had to figure out a way to, like, do this and show myself. So, I figured out this uh, software called DroidCam OBS. And they, they came out with a, just called DroidCam, which I guess wasn't specifically tar targeted at the software OBS. It was just called DroidCam, and I guess you could use it on different softwares. Uh, I haven't tried that one out because I am using OBS, so I got DroidCam OBS, which is the latest version, and it basically turns any cell phone or tablet, excuse me, any cell phone or tablet, Android or Apple, into a webcam. So I'm using my old cell phone so the video quality isn't the greatest but it, it's good enough because it's just down in a little corner it's just in this little corner a 640 by 480 little corner at the bottom right of the screen and it was good enough for this purpose and that's what i'm using so again thank you for coming along i hope you enjoy this if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. 
And if you're still watching this and don't like it, why the heck are you still here? <laughs> I said that in my last video. I, I thought it was a good line. Why are you still here? If you don't like it, why are you still here? But, um, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to be alerted to every time I release a new video, you can click that little bell icon. I don't do that myself, because I don't like too many notifications on my phone. But if you want to know when my next one comes out, go ahead and click that uh, little bell icon. Alright, well... Without further ado, let's move on with my Neo Geo Pocket Color video. Alright, take care. Have a good night. Hi, this is Quinn from Quintech Retro. Um, once again, I'm showing you a box that basically has nothing to do with what I'm actually about to show you, but this came from... The box, at least, came from the Vatican Library Collection. I don't even remember what came in here. However, that is not what I'm about to show off. What I'm showing off is the Neo Geo Pocket Color. So, I bought this around 2000. I have several games for it. Um, I mentioned it in an earlier video, uh, it was sort of a rival to the Game Boy Color, basically. Um, it is not backlit, you do need light to actually see it, but it is in color. And I have a few games for it, I actually have eight games. One is already installed in here, or connected to here and the other seven are right here so this is the console and they did have several different versions um, I kind of like this one they had like a matte black one they had a black one that had sort of a uh, little dot matrix kind of look I like this blue one because I like the color blue, because I'm a guy. So, this is the item I bought back in 2000. And shortly after that, they discontinued this. And it kind of pissed me off, because I used to be able to buy the games at Toys R Us, and this was before Toys R Us went out of business. But as soon as the game system was cancelled, I thought I could go to Toys R Us and buy the games on discount. No. They took all the games that were at Toys R Us and sent them back to the factory. And you couldn't buy them. So I ended up having to buy them at other stores, like used game stores and stuff. That also sold new items. I bought them all new. In box. And I still have the original boxes for even the console. Or the little handheld system. But I, I don't know where they are right this very second. I do have them. I may show them in a later video. But this was a really cool system. It was the Neo Geo Pocket. And this was the Pocket Color. And made by SNK. The makers of many great games that I love from the 90s. Including Metal Slug, and King of Fighters, and of course Samurai Showdown, which I keep keeps coming up in my commentary. So, in the back, it just takes two AA batteries. And I just got these uh, Amazon Basics batteries recently. And then you got your little disc battery that goes in there for your save games. The one in here is dead. Um, I need to get another one, but for now I'm just showing what I have. And then in here I have uh, this is King of Fighters R2 
which I believe R1 was on the original Neo Geo Pocket, which was in black and white. And then about a year later, they came out with the Neo Geo Pocket Color. So R1, I believe, was a black and white game. And then R2, King of Fighters, was in color. Well, I also have, and these came in these cool little cases. And I think I have the seventh case, or the eighth case. It's in one of those uh, original boxes. This is Biomotor Unitron, which is kind of an interesting sort of strategy. You build this robot, and then you have to battle all these people. Sort of a strategy RPG kind of thing. I forget what they called that exact genre. But you had to build up a little robot, and you could customize it and give it all these, each um, the arm and leg and the chest and everything. You could upgrade to different and meld together different uh, items that you would collect, and you would upgrade your little, your Unitron or your Biomotor or whatever they called them. And it was kind of a cool game. And then as, when you built it up, you could have more and more abilities to battle other droids. Then I have Gals Fighters. Oh, this game is awesome. It takes all the sexy women of SNK, and it's only women, and throws them all into this one game. And it was pretty cool. I remember, yeah. This game is awesome. Then I have... Fatal Fury. So this is Fatal Fury, and I think it was called First Contact. I can't re quite read that, but I think that's what it was called. First Contact, or something like that. Something Contact. Fatal Fury. Then I have, this game was awesome. This was the companion game to the Dreamcast SNK vs. Capcom. And this is the Match of the Millennium. And this game also had the Capcom characters and the SNK characters. And you could use that link cable that I talked about in my Dreamcast video, which plugged up through... This little link cable port. And I used to have that cable. I don't know what happened to it. It, it disappeared all throughout the years somewhere. Maybe at some point I may come back across it. But I, I think that is long gone. So you could... Um, it's not like you could like play this game on the Dreamcast screen or anything. But if you had SNK versus Capcom and this game, you could... And you achieve some, if you made some achievements and advanced, you could, like, transfer data. You could transfer data between the Neo Geo Pocket and, and the Dreamcast. So, it was kind of a neat little device. Moving on, I have Card Fighters Clash, and this is the SNK version. They had an SNK version, SNK versus Capcom, but this was the SNK version, and then they had a Capcom version, and this is one of those card fighting games that were kind of popular in the late 90s, early 2000s, that kind of started out uh, with Pokemon, and sort of like uh, Magic the Gathering, or a lot of those, like, strange card games that they had back in the day. And it's just a fun game. It was a fun game. And then I have, with my love of... I've mentioned it several times, Samurai Showdown. 
they came out with Samurai Showdown 2 for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And they had a Samurai Showdown 1 on the Neo Geo Pocket in black and white, but I had the color version, so I got the color game. And then, last but not least, one of their franchises that was an awesome platformer, an action platformer called Metal Slug. And this is Metal Slug First Mission. And you could, uh, your little character, you jump really high, you could shoot all around you in a circle, you could, you blew up a lot of tanks, you could jump into like little tanks and drive them around and destroy a bunch of stuff. And this game was really cool. And this is the Neo Geo Pocket version. So these are the games I have. And I'll do a little mini demonstration here because I do have a lamp here, so maybe you'll be able to see it. But you're going to see this light flash a lot because this battery is dead. So it's basically indicating, A, your save games aren't working. But it's still... So I have to set all the settings... So first I have to set my language, and you can see me in the reflection, that's kind of neat. English or Japanese, so I'm going to select English, and then it asks you yes or no, yes, English, and select colors and I always like the blue background so I'm gonna keep blue to match my console or my handheld and okay yes okay set date and time what date and time is it it is December Twenty twenty. It is three. Three oh nine. Settings finished. Yeah, I know. I know it's not working. It's okay. King of Fighters R2. So, I just wanted to show that booting up. I'm not actually going to play the game on the system. It's going to let me power it down. Powered down. Okay, so I'm gonna, really good. I'm going to show my game footage uh, through an emulator because you can't really see that little tiny screen, and then with all these reflections, and you have to have backlight. Uh, doesn't even it's not even backlit. You have to have like light from another an outside light source. So I'm going to show some gameplay using an emulator called Neopop which was, I believe, the first emulator 
on the, well, the first really good emulator that came out for this, and it's been out for a long time. But, um, thank you for coming along. I'm glad you're enjoying my uh, channel. Thank you for coming along. I'm glad you're enjoying my channel, Quintech Retro, and this is another piece of retro goodness that I have. So now I'm going to move on and I'm going to show some gameplay. And one thing I forgot to mention is this controller on here. As you can hear, it's got micro switches and it feels very much like a, an analog controller. And this is the only handheld um, game system that I'm aware of that has a controller like this. And he wasn't that fond of it, but I, I kind of love it. I like the feel. You can hear where you are all. One, two, three, four, four seven, eight, nine, ten, all 12 positions. Um, you can hear where you are. So I really like that um, functionality of this system. Hi, this is Quinn, and welcome to the gameplay portion of my video. Um, like I said earlier, actually trying to see me play the game on the little handheld is not very practical. It's not backlit, and so you have to have light to be able to even see the colors. So, I'm using this emulator. It's called Neopop. It came out many, many years ago, but it works pretty good. So, I hope you enjoy this. And I know in my previous uh, videos, I always played a bunch of fighting games. And I have a lot of fighting games for this system as well. But I'm going to go in another direction in this one. I'm going to start out with one of my favorite platformers of all time. Metal Slug, and this of course is the uh, little pocket version, the Neo Geo pocket version, but the arcade game on the Neo Geo was awesome, and they came out with, I think, five different versions of it. Uh, obviously, the first one, Metal Slug, the Metal Slug 2, 3, 4, and 5, and this is called Metal Slug First Mission. And they did come out with the Metal Slug second mission, which I have the the ROM on this emulator for, but I don't actually own the cartridge. So I'm going to show you some footage of me playing Metal Slug first mission. I hope you enjoy it. So this is the opening screen. And that music for a little handheld system that music's not bad Slug. First mission. Rebel Army's weapons R&D facility found. Send out reinforcements. Target. Send Metal Slug. And unit of development into battle. Mission. Destroy weapons R&D facility ASAP. Good luck. Mission Zero. Emergency mobilization. <laughs> and I... I airdrop in with the parachute and 
I even wave it, wave at the uh, player, breaking the fourth wall, as they call it. Ouch. So, you pick up those things and it gives you upgraded weapons. Now I have... It had the letter M, I'm not sure what that stands for, but I have 85... 55 rounds. 44 rounds. Ooh. And you save these POWs, and sometimes they give you things when you grab them. Oh, that gave me some extra time. Oh, ouch. That little twerp. Ah, uh, darn it. Oh, but that gives me some special ability, I believe. jump into the metal slug, which is this little tank vehicle. Yay! And this little twerp. And the gas uh, replenishes your life, which is kind of cool that you can do that. the tin cup and you gotta be careful of these uh, landmines these guys below you they will be able to shoot up at you if you don't kill them immediately and again the gas replenishes my little metal slug AKA tank. Oh, and then here come all these guys. They're. They have little helicopter, little propellers mounted to their backs. So they're not parachuting, airdropping in. They're airdropping with parach with uh, the ability to hover. <coughs> Excuse me. This is kind of neat. It's a little side, side-scrolling shooter level. Uh, I guess these are heat-seeking missiles. Ouch! Ooh! So these rock, the enemy rockets drop little items. That's kind of cool. Ouch! And this guy with his little sh shield. Good luck with that against my plane. Ouch. Good luck with that shield. Little pump. Ah, uh, and then here's the first boss. Oh, ouch. When those guns swivel, that's when you know the fire is about to fire. So this guy's pretty uh, predictable. Just gotta pay attention to those, those guns. Oh, there they go. And he goes left to right.
so if you run to the right, you're you're pretty safe. Ouch. Unless you don't run to the right, then you get almost killed. Oh, he switched it up. Little prick. I'll punch him in the throat. Let me try this one more time. I think I'm going to, if I retry it, I start out with a more powerful gun. So let me try this one more time. So maybe if I mow him down really good with this more powerful gun, maybe I can, ow, maybe I can beat him. attention and probably will work a lot better. Ah, uh, well, actually that first boss, he's kind of tough. And this is a handheld game, so it's fun though. It's fun. I like it. So let's try something else. So this is SNK versus Capcom. Card Fighters Clash. So it's uh, these games got really popular in the late '90s, uh, basically because of Pokemon, and Pokemon had a bunch of card games, video card video games. I probably started out as an actual handheld card game. I don't know, but this is one. You know, they came out with Capcom versus SNK. For the Dreamcast, well, it came out in arcade first. Then they had the Dreamcast port, and then they came out with this system called the Neo Geo Pocket, and they made an SNK versus Capcom fighting game called Match of the Millennium, and they also made this card game. And there are two versions. There's the Capcom version. And then there's the SNK version, which is the one that I own. Uh, I actually own, but I'm again I'm playing it uh, through this emulator just so it looks better. And um, well, I remember playing this game quite a bit. I wasn't great at it, but it, it's fun. It, it's interesting. I like it. So I hope you enjoy watching it. So here we go. Card Fighters! Card Fighters! SNK version. So I guess I'll show this explain rules so you can kind of understand how this game works. So, arranging a deck. Yeah, I haven't played this in years, so this would be a good little recap tutorial for me so I can remember how to play it. So let's learn how to arrange the deck. You can begin battles right away. When you beat players and gather cards, you can arrange cards as you like. Choose card deck from the option menu. When you get 50 cards, you can arrange decks. You can't choose three of the same card. Let's begin the game. When piles are shuffled, choose five cards. Choose who goes first. first player chooses one card from the pile. So, 
almost like a gin rummy play style. During your turn, pick a card from your hand. Do things in any order until you select attack. You can choose one char CHA character card per turn. And you can use three cards max. Hand, search, info, attack, ability, and end are your different um, options you can do each round. And this is Rim Rimnarel, who I believe is Nakaru's sister or daughter. I think her sister. When a character card is put in the ring, SP rises accordingly. So, what is SP? You got your hits points and your SP. Special points? I don't know. I forget. SP is needed to use AC cards. So, now the SP went up to 4. And this is the Awakening. Shin uses Awakening. Rimmerell is powered up. Okay. So that powers her up. An extra 300 battle points. I guess that's in what BP stands for. The AC card, the AC card offers help to get through battles. When enough SP, with enough SP, you can use numerous AC cards per turn. Next, back up. Link characters in a ring, so you you have a backup character that backs you up. With one in your hand, and raise BP 300 points. Okay. Nakaruru's backup. Rinmorel. Oh, Nakaruru is backing up Rinmorel. Rimnurel. Backup can be used one time per turn. Backup combinations vary with each character. Okay, so whoever you pair with each other, characters that are related to each other, you get a little bit better backup, I guess. Next, attack. Use it at the end of your turn to attack. Character just put in ring can attack in that turn. During an attack, if enemies counters Okay, now I'm starting to remember this game. Attack and counter. Okay. And those whose battle points higher stay in the ring. Those still in the ring lose the BP difference. If there's no counter, enemies are damaged directly. When characters combine attacks, this is called the Unite Attack. Oh. To make a Unite Attack, you need SP. Special points, or whatever that stands for. To unite two characters equals five points. To unite three equals ten points. It costs you five points or ten points. Sure me. Get out of here. If you take a counter, then you have if you take counter then, if you have more BP, the difference is taken directly from the enemy as damage. Okay, to repeat, or if HP or card's values fall to zero, you lose. Here ends rule info. Okay, that's enough. Let's just start the game. I could read off all the 
Let me choose a character. Okay. Card game beginners. Girls from West Japan. Eh, I'll be the guy. Because I'm a guy. But I, I like to play as the female character sometimes too. But eh, I don't like her backwards hat and her the way her hair falls. I, he looks cooler. So I'd rather see him. Ooh, Shin. Hey, this will be simple because I'm a big fan of Neon, Ge Neon Genesis Evangelion. And the main character of that um, anime series is named Shinji. So I've always... I actually use that name on a lot of my home computers because that's one of my favorite animes so this guy's name was Shin already all I have to do is add a J and an I now he's Shinji okay all right here are the rules hey kid hey Shinji are you listening I'm trying to teach you and you're spacing out what gall? The nerve. Do you want to hear the rules for Card Clash again? See rules again? Nah. Are you following me? You following me? By the way, Cap. By the way, Cap, last year's champion has come here to play. Uh oh. How about taking him on? If you lose, nothing changes. Win, and it's your break. Go get him. Okay, and there goes Shin. Cap. I guess from Capcom. What can I do for you? Looking for a game. Very well, you got it. But can you beat me? Ooh, can you beat me? Let's shuffle that deck. Choose five cards. Uh oh, Cap goes first. And I don't know if with pressing the button, I did press the button while that was happening. I don't know if that affects, it might be random or it might affect who comes up first. I don't know exactly. X copy. When this character counter attacks, BP equals enemy characters. Ooh. I got Carol. So let me look at my hand. Cham Cham. Position, I think. I don't know, I could put him up there. I guess you can't. They just, you can select it. I have to answers. Tan. And you don't have to use three cards. You can just use one card if you want. But, what the heck. I'll use Hydern. Oh, he's the backup character. Okay. So, alright, well then. Attack. No attack or left. Uh, let's just use him without a backup.
take your best shot. And... Yes. And oh, yeah. Let's use my as my best shot. And and let's hide her in there. And Kade or KD. Or Haru. Him the knife. All right, twelve. I'll counter you with him. You counter. Yes. Okay, so if you don't end up using that backup card, I think you lose it, which... The more I'm playing this, the more I remember. Baby heads, back up. In the knife powered up. Junie enters! Oh! Uh-oh, double attack. Yes, let's counter with... Kade. Against the more powerful character, sure. Yeah, so he just takes the hit. So I draw a card. And... Cham Cham use... Oh, so you can't take the character once you place it on the table. I guess you gotta keep playing it. Well, let's let's up uh, the stupid. Come on. Oh, I should have attacked. Darn it! Ah, uh, forgetting steps.
So even though, even though it's a card game, the music, um, it makes it fun and, and enjoyable. And it is kind of exciting. I like it. I'm tired of this little jerk. I, I do want to counter and get rid of that. Okay, so certain char you have to have certain characters to back up other characters. But if it actually works, now Hayate is powered up. So let's use him since he's powered up. Okay, so you can make... <sighs> K.O. Dang it. Oh, what the heck. So then this goes on until you um, take out all the other players' cards, and that's when your game ends. So, it's, so it has a lot of gameplay and replayability. It's a, it's a fun game. I like it. So I hope you enjoyed this section. So thank you again for coming along my journey uh, on this Neo Geo Pocket Color. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I really appreciate you. I, I am very grateful that you enjoy 
my content enough to watch it. And if you're at the end here, you must have watched the entire video. So I really appreciate that. So thank you for supporting me. And thank you for um, enjoying my channel. And it's my pleasure to give you this content. I do it out of... Uh, I, I love to do this. I do this out of love. Because I really appreciate that you came to my channel to watch me. And I know probably a lot of my subscribers are people that I know in real life, but I maybe I will gain a following and other people throughout the world will get to know me through my channel. So I just really want to say thank you for coming along and supporting my project, my videos, and what I love to do. And I, I'm glad that... You, that you enjoy watching me. You may not even be into these old vintage computers or video games. Maybe you just like how I talk. I don't know. That's what my family tells me. But you probably wouldn't come here to my channel if, if you weren't into these old systems. So I hope you get some um, knowledge out of it. I hope you learn something. I hope you get some enjoyment out of watching my content and again thank you for coming along and I really appreciate you and thank you so much and you have a good night and come back again for my next episode of Quintic Retro. Alright, take care, have a good night.